and welcome back to Light for the Long Dark. Uh, today is going to be a different episode in which we are going to talk about gear. What do you actually need to carry to keep yourself underweight, but also have what you need to stay alive? So, we're going to go ahead and start off with an empty roster. And I mean completely empty. I am naked. And uh, we're going to kind of work our way up from beginning of the game to, you know, what we have at that point. Now, the beginning of any game, we're going to start with clothing, and that's going to be a completely random wild card to get that. You're going to throw on anything that you can find, and it's not going to be good. And that's the game, and I get that. Now, how to get there, I'm not going to cover in too much detail, but you are going to want to get yourself into furs. Now, how to do that in detail, I covered in a separate video called Get Hairy, a long dark beginner's guide to furs. And I'll have the link included with this video also. But that would be the first step I would recommend in order to get uh, your uh, clothes upgraded to something like this. Basically, you tell that uh, we operate off the furs of the animals that we hunt off. We look at the best socks we can get. Deerskin, wolfskin, rabbit will take care of your needs to get you uh, with a good armor and warmth value. And most importantly, it's made out of materials that as you continue to hunt through the long game, you'll be able to maintain and keep up. Most of the time, that means that you will have a 32 degree uh, warmth bonus as well as a 41 percent uh, once we put away the clothes that uh, we are no longer wearing then we will find that we are at uh, 22 pounds under our I'm at 77 pounds because of well-fed bonus or if you have no buffs or bag then it would be 66 pounds but still that's only 22 pounds for good solid warmth speaking of warmth let's talk about fire starting gear now now obviously the holy grail you want is magnifying glass because that is so reusable on any day with uh, sunshine to make fire. Most players often make the mistake of carrying just about every match that they come across and I've had games where I'm literally carrying five pounds of matches so collect them but stow them away. I do suggest carrying at least one book of each type of wooden matches and paper matches and then obviously carry a fire starter, kind of a one of each mentality, and also an emergency accelerant, a single emergency accelerant for those days when you are freezing and you need that fire now. Now I don't carry much tinder these days because I've gotten myself up to fire starting level three, which means I do not need tinder. Getting to fire starting level three is a great goal because that cuts down on the need and you can get it done in an afternoon. Now there's one more piece to fire starting equipment, underplate, a torch. As soon as you can, I always encourage you to pull a torch from the fire and put it out or to make a proper one from materials. But a torch is something that uh, I always use because it will give you the ability to save on matches. I don't know how many times an average player will wind up trying to start a fire with just a match and that fire doesn't go out. But if you use a torch and light the torch first, the torch is a guaranteed light. So that way when you have a lit torch then and you are trying to light the fire with the stove, even if it goes out once or twice or however many times it takes with the random number generator, you can try again with the torch and you haven't used up a second match. You haven't gone through half a pack. You are minimizing your resources. Adding the fire equipment to your gear should take us to about 32 pounds and we've covered the most important things of warmth and heat. Now let's talk about tools. Without question, the first two items I add into my kit are going to be a knife and hatchet because that's going to be the things that keep you alive, chopping firewood and fending off wolves and making things. While you're making things, my third item is actually going to be a sewing kit because while you're making clothes or repairing clothes, you're going to need that. I am also going to go ahead and add a lantern because there are times where you do want to keep uh, your ability to see up. 
Fish hooks have a ridiculous uh, value to weight ratio, so I always try to grab those and keep that in line. Also, fish hooks will also work for sewing equipment, too. I don't know if you uh, were aware of that. If you aren't, this is why I'm teaching. Uh, so I always uh, try to keep those in my pocket as well. Plus, when you can fish, it's a great way to get some free calories. All right, so after we add tools, we are under 35 pounds. Food and drink, I'm not going to go into too much detail, except to say I encourage you to keep a drink in your gear for emergency purposes when you're outside. This then brings us then to first aid. Other items like rosehip tea and reishi mushrooms. Keep something to boil up for when it's cold. Also keep about three bandages I usually recommend. And also remember, use a old man's beard instead of alcohol, because obviously the beard is much lighter. Let's now talk to weapons. Now the rifle is a long favorite, but let's be honest, the rifle is 8 pounds. And when we are focusing on traveling light yet effective, let's remember that the bow is under 2 pounds, 1.1 pounds in fact. Let's also remember that arrows are reusable, bullets are not. So you can understand why my personal choice is always going to be to take the bow and the arrows over the rifle every time. Now there's one other variable to discuss. Uh, since the Steadfast Ranger update, I am a fan of the revolver. With it being half the weight of the rifle, it is an excellent tool for wolf attacks. I do like to carry that strap to me. With that in the equipment, we're looking at about 40 pounds, a little under, so we're still well under the 66 pound minimum, or 77 if you take advantage of one of the options. So we are looking pretty equipped, but also still well underweight. At this point, let's start talking about uh, just generals. I always recommend keeping a, a one large bottle of water on, so you can very quickly make up hot teas if you need. But let's talk about water now. Ultimately, the choice always comes down to carrying two tin cans, which are ridiculously light, but it's still very little water, or a cooking pot. Now, this entire video, I've been trying to show you how to minimize your weight. This is one of the reasons I invested. If you trim your weight down, you can carry the cooking pot and have the advantage of cooking water in bulk, as well as uh, uh, shaving time off of your cooking. So this is one of the places where I invest all the efforts I've had of whittling down my weight. So I usually go for carrying the cooking pot. If you are still close on weight or disagree with me, carry the two tin cans. Play your game your way. Speaking of choices, let's move over to one of the other dilemmas in the game. The traditional bedroll, or we can look at the bearskin. The traditional bedroll is under three pounds. The bear skin, that sucker is just under seven. But this also gives you additional warmth bonus than pretty much any storm you're bulletproof. Which do you want to carry? Well, there is no wrong answer because I'll fully acknowledge you have to kill a couple of bears to get the bear skin bedroll. But again, I have trimmed my weight down a lot so, for my personal gain, I like the idea of being able to carry that thing and work my way through any storm, and you will see I'm still under 50 pounds. So, there is a time to invest the weight that you've freed up, and I think making sure you can make through the weather and make through the water, that's a couple of them. Now I'll give you a cursory look through uh, kind of what's in our inventory right now as a reminder, but there's one more detail that we... the pry bar. It is three pounds of weight, and the question I always like to ask is what are the odds I'm going to use it? Now keep in mind I'm trying to give you a guide for maximum weight to carry for distance moving. The pry bar is one of those things that I try to bring with me so I have with me at camp. But I've done well to get my weight low here. This is something for moving, for moving into new territory, for being nomadic, that sort of thing. You can tell to round out this gear, I've added a few more road flares, I've added a sharpening stone, just to you know, give me a few comfort tools. 
and I'm still under our 60 pounds of limit. 66 is the normal cap, but there's two options to raise it. You're going to ultimately have to make your own decisions on what you're going to do. But I hope this helps. If tips and tricks like this interest you, leave a like and subscribe. I drop videos like this each week. If you want to see more, that's what the playlists are for. I'm Commander Tom, and I'll keep the fire going. I look forward for you to join. Thanks.